Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicole, and I'm the parent support worker for the Niagara Catholic District School Board Early On Child and Family Centers. I am here today for our weekly coffee and conversation in which all parents, grandparents, guardians, and caregivers are welcome. Our program topics revolve around ensuring you feel well, confident, and present in your parenting and caregiving role. As always, if you are unable to sit with me now, you are welcome to warm up your coffee and sit with me at a later, more convenient time. Our video content is available on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, so be sure to follow and subscribe to stay up to date with our videos. Last week, we looked at the developmental considerations for reducing stress. Specifically, we reviewed social-emotional development, self-regulation, and attachment. This week, we will follow the same guidelines as presented by the Kids Have Stress 2 program to overview temperament and gender differences. As you'd recall from last week, in order to effectively reduce stress for our children, it's important that we understand some of the developmental capacities and the needs of young children at different ages. So this developmental focus will give you some background knowledge to support your understanding of your child's stress. So let's start with temperament. I'm going to start with an article by Sick Kids. It's called About Kids Health. They defined temperament as your child's behavior style in that it determines how they react to situations and how they express and regulate their emotions. So it connects with our previous topics greatly. We can support our kids' ability to express and regulate their emotions, but it's also important to know their specific temperament style to support them in the best way possible. So quoting the website here to share the three major types of temperament being easy, spirited, and slow to warm up. Starting to quote now, about 40% of babies and children have an easy temperament, meaning that they readily approach and easily adapt to new situations. They react mildly to things, they are regular in their sleep and wake and eating routines, they have a positive overall mood, um, and easy babies tend to make their parents feel as if they are doing a great job, which makes sense. Approximately 10% of babies and children have a difficult or what we call spirited temperament, which means that they withdraw from or are slow to adapt to new situations. They have intense reactions, they have irregular routines, and they have a negative mood. They tend to have long and frequent crying episodes, and they tend to um, make parents question their care child care abilities and wonder what they're doing wrong. However, the term difficult has a negative connotation as it overlooks what often uh, what are often valuable behavior, behavioral traits such as assertiveness, persistence, and decisiveness. So other words, like I said, such as spirited, or sometimes we use the word feisty, have been um, suggested to use as they tend to sound more positive. However, the word difficult is used as it is, a, is, it is an established term in the scientific literature. But it's, it's good for you to think of these children as being spirited or feisty because it is, it is a better um, representation of their temperament. And then we have slow to warm up, where we have 5 to 15% of babies and children. So these children uh, withdraw from or are slow to adapt to new things. They have a low level of activity and they show a lot of negative mood. Slow to warm up babies do not like being pushed into things and they are frequently thought of as being shy or sensitive. And then we have that final 40%. These children do not fit into any one of these categories. Instead, they have a combination of these qualities. I end quote. So this point of 40% of children not fitting into any one category is really important as some children will experience a difficult temperament or a difficult temperament as their sleep and wake routines um, or their feeding routines are irregular, but then they have an easy temperament and their quality of mood is generally positive. So if knowing the ins and outs of temperament are of interest to you, I will attach the Six Sick Kids article to my video so that you can see the different temperament characteristics and how they differ based on the type of temperament that your child has. But let's refocus on how temperament relates to childhood stress. 
So Kids Have Stress 2 tells us that a child's temperament is an important factor in determining their sensitivity and response to stress, as some children may experience more stress than others, as they may be more sensitive to stress while others may be better at handling stress. This makes a lot of sense. So you may have one child that loves seeking out new adventures and loves finding new toys, while another child may, ha may, may hang back and observe as their sibling does the exploring. One of your children may have great, may be great at nap time um, because they self-soothe, and then others might need that extra support at bedtime. These children's different temperaments typically require different kinds of parenting, which you might have noticed. Um, what works for one child often doesn't work for another. Research has shown that the presence of a sensitive and responsive caregiver can prevent elevations in cortisol among toddlers, even if that child is temperamentally fearful or anxious. As a reminder, those cortisol levels heighten in times of stress to prepare a person for battle, so to speak, and if the challenge at hand is not resolved, then the cortisol levels stay at a heightened, and, um, heightened state and lead to various chronic issues. So it is important as a parent to observe your child's temperament, consider how your temperament or personality may affect theirs, and tailor your responses to each child's specific needs. So let's look at an example of one temperament trait and how it may affect your child's response to stress. So we've discussed in the past this idea that external stimuli can be a stressor for your child if they are highly sensitive. Well, the sensitivity is actually a temperament trait. Kids Have Stress 2 explains it as so, and I quote, Some children experience their senses more strongly than others and are more sensitive to sounds, structures, flavors, and physical discomforts. Sensitive children may have less emotional control and can be overwhelmed by sensations like strong smells, loud sounds, or even the tags on their clothes. On the plus side, they often have a strong awareness of what is going on around them. Less sensitive children are less likely to experience sensory overload and tend to adapt to new situations more easily. Less sensitivity has no real downside, although these children may enjoy sensory experiences less intensely. End quote. So for those children who are highly sensitive, you know that they may become overwhelmed while perhaps while you drive on the highway, because of the loud sounds that the cars make. So you know that this may cause them stress. So can you find a solution when you have to make long car rides so that your child does not have to experience that stress? The other temperament traits include your child's activity level, their ability to concentrate, the intensity of their emotions, the regularity of their routines, their comfort with exploration and trying new things, their adaptability to new stimuli, their determination and persistence, and finally their overall mood. So the takeaway here should be that each child is different, and we have to consider their temperament when we consider how to reduce their stress. As I said, if you're interested in learning more about the temperament traits, you can visit the link um, about kids' health. So the other developmental difference we are going to talk about today that affects stress is gender. Kids Have Stress 2 states that, and I quote, there are inherent gender differences in girls' and boys' brains that are present from birth, and these differences are a result of genetics rather than hormones. For example, girls are born with more sensitive hearing than boys, and those differences increase as children grow up, end quote. In addition, there is research that suggests a young girl's area of the brain for feeling emotion, which is the amygdala, makes connections with the part of the brain that's needed for language, which is the cere cerebral cortex. This, develop, this develops connections sooner than boys, which allows them to talk about their feelings sooner. And, as you know from previous Coffee and Conversations, understanding and expressing our emotions is an important component of development and managing stress. Lastly, the Kids Have Stress 2 um, gave some tips on gender differences related to how your children may experience stress. 
So I quote again, girls may be particularly sensitive to noisy environments and may need a quiet place to relax and de-stress. Consider having noise reducing headphones available. This one hits close to home. This is exactly how I feel. Continuing to quote, research has shown that boys may prefer a side-by-side -side approach to talking and sharing emotional exchanges than face-to-face, -face, which may seem too invasive. So try reading a story or having a conversation while sitting next to a boy who is distressed. So he could be sitting right here and we can have a conversation. Continuing to quote, young boys and girls tend to deal differently with major stressors such as divorce, whereas boys may experience anger and girls often try to be perfect in these situations, end quote. So there are just, these are just some ways in which gender may affect the way that your child experiences stress. So if you are interested in learning more about gender, you can check out a link that I'm going to provide about um, gender by caringforkids.cps which is a resource that we used last week as well. We are going to leave it there today. We now know the developmental influence on stress by looking at emotional development, self-regulation, attachment, temperament, and gender differences. Next week, we will consider self-esteem and resilience. And after we've considered the um, developmental influences on stress, we will look at the eight key concepts of Kids Have Stress 2 and the stress stoplight um, as provided by Kids Have Stress 2. So don't forget if you'd like to join Diane and I for an interactive Kids Have Stress 2 workshop, you can feel free to email me at nicole.mansell at ncdsb.com. Be on the lookout for our mindful mini activities tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.